I heard a bandit's on the way here. Yeah, we're not. We're in big trouble. I'm worried. The villagers are still in the square. Excuse me. Have come way too soon. On top of that, Mayor Clado said something about coming to an agreement and Mrs. Gathering all villagers in the square. I'll do something about villagers. We've got to hurry. As it is, I don't see any way this can end peacefully. Yes, if we can dispel our infamy with this then. I don't know about that, but I could take that Gustav down a notch or two if I bought him with Bass's head as a present. Then I will also... Camus, you're fine here. An injured person will just hold us back. But in this case... Miss Mackey, please take care of Camus. Camus. Mackey. I absolutely must go. Even out with a knight's emblem on my chest. My pride as a knight remains. You've got it on your chest. It's right there by your hand. We rose over words of my troublesome partner. Camus. Of course you. I'm sorry, Mackey. Honestly, it's the same as that time. Mackey. This is a dagger my father carried for self-defence. I don't know how to use it myself, but there is magic embedded in the handle. I'm giving this to you. Thank you, Mackey. I'll make a use of it. You've always been like this. Once you've decided on something, you're always so stubborn. We quickly threw a plan together, but when we arrived at the square, we found that the Keepers of Flame had already set up camp there. Looking at that thing, I guess I'd talk about giving tribute to the bandits as true. Winding his way through a crowd of villagers, Clado appeared before a band leader. Behind him, several people carrying tribute in their hands. When they were good on the ground, Clado prostrated himself there. My Lord Fire Hero, we are people of a village of millet. Humbly obey your words. Please give us village your divine protection from now on. This is all the tribute you have. Hmm, what a pitiful poor village. <laughs> What's he looking so proud of himself for? Shh. I'll hear you. More importantly, everyone, take your places. I'll give a signal when it's time. When I do, begin following your plan. Everyone slipped into the crowd and disappeared. As I waited for the right timing, I listened closely to the leader in Kato's conversation. You've gone through a lot of trouble. I'll be taking this tribute then. The leader signaled his subordinates who carried out the tribute. Any time now, I hit a firebomb in the palm of my hand. Or set up a small explosion in the middle of a square. That was going to be a signal for the others. What is the meaning of this? Kato raised his head with a bit of shout as the bandits drew his swords and seized him. We've received our tribute and conveniently the villagers are all gathered here too. Now, let's go to a chase. I'm aware the traders gathered your little hoof and grass fruit back. Are we taking all of their goods as well? Of course, it's just as Kojima said. The leader placed a hand on his sword. He's planning to kill Kato. Shit. Time. The fire by my foot was not down, uh, not down by the leader's sword, but the moment it fell, small columns of fire and white smoke spread around the area. The village, huddled in panic, was surprised with the sound of scattered from the square like baby spiders. Taking care of the villagers will be up to the army's team. Next is our turn. You from before. I'm impressed you managed to survive. Looks like you have even worse luck than me. You should probably be worrying about your own life though, Mr. Fake Fire Hero. What are you? That talk about you still being alive after 150 years? That's a fairy tale. <laughs> Fool. 
the true fire wound dwells within me. Those who wield the 27 true runes are bestowed with a power of everlasting youth. Those pillars of fire before were supposed to be the power of the 127 true runes? Give me a break. You don't know much about the world, do you, you bastard? That's right. I compare that magic from earlier with a sinister power I've seen before. This is a mere child's play. How cheeky coming from someone pretending to be a blue knight. Take this. A bandit slash. Last rare horses that came rushing towards us. Following our plan, we turned our backs to them and ran in different directions. Hold it! You're trying to run away! We continue running as a bandit shouted after us. Before long, we run past the area devastated by the fire onto a narrow street of clean buildings. Cleo! Here they come! Alright. Koyo's voice came down from the top of a partially destroyed building. Hey you guys, how about you try and miss some size? Koyo pulled on the rope, causing mountains of heap of rubble to come crumbling down. You little brat! With a path blocked their horses, the bandits chased Koyo on foot. But he quickly disappeared amongst the building and made him catching him impossible. Well, the, well, the guys that are left will be my opponents. That should do it. Everything's good on my end too. Let's go to where Big Bro Kojima is. Go, oh, you bastards! Haven't you heard of Kojima with Lamp Dragon Bandits? They're not getting past me. Kojima was blocking the way to the door of a building, pinning off a bandit's attacks. Bro? Don't tell me splitting up was a bad plan after all. In that case, I threw a smoke bomb without a moment's delay. Ah! The hell is this? You sneaky bastard! Where'd you run off to? The bandits were stumbling around, we joined up with Kojima. Bro! Are you okay? Bro! Yeah, somehow. What about Low Wen? What happened to that spirited lady? We screwed up. Low Wen was shouting all mad like when an arrow came flying straight at her. And somehow I ended up fighting these guys who were hid. As the smoke screen began to disappear, the ring of bandits closed in on us. Looks like there's about 15 of them at a glance. Which just mean Koyo and Ninja Kojima. This might get a little tough. We can't just abandon her. Top of that, I'm worried about leaving Mikotov by himself much longer. Hmm. I was thinking again soon he's my wife. And son before going back to Zexon. But is the feast already over? Who are you? Nobody at all, just a humble mercenary. Hmm, it isn't Kojima and Koyo. Are these bandits your friends? If that's the case, I'm sorry. Some of them came at me, so I'm end up killing them. It's our man Gil! What the hell, another acquaintance? These guys aren't anything like our friends. Hmm, sure it seems that way. It's for enemies then. I've been thinking of retiring, but I suppose I'll be lending a hand just one last time. <laughs> Don't ever do it, girl, you old geezer. We're not giving out any reward this time. But I've got no problem with that. I've learned a few things in the last battle, too. Besides, these guys seem like they might be really loaded. Well, in that case, we'll be counting on you, then. I'm heading over to Miklatov. Ha! <laughs> Who's next? Miklatov. Sir Nash. Sorry, I had some unexpected difficulties over at Kojima's spot. Just then, and in that moment's distraction, a bandit who'd been holding his shadows came running at Miklatov with a sword. Ugh. <laughs> 
you're a troublesome fellow, despite always telling me not to let my guard down. Camus! You... Lying down and being nursed to help by a lady isn't so bad. But it's this noisy outside is rather hard to get any sleep. Huh. And you call me the stubborn one. I'm hopeless. But, I, but you haven't changed that much yourself. Sir Nash. I guess there's no helping it. I can't exactly tell you to go back now. So, the Lola has returned. Kajima should have taken care of your stubbornness, but left the square. Splitting your troops up that much isn't a good plan, you know. I don't suppose you'd like to surrender quietly. You think you're having me cornered? Don't make me laugh. But, do you? The leader placed his left hand on the back of his right. He's planning to use that fire magic. You think we'd let you do that again? Mikatov picked up momentum and ran up with the leader with his sword. The nearby bandits quickly spurred their horses. Mikotov and I were quickly cornered. <sighs> Seems the leader's got some skilled underlings on hand. It'd be impossible to just kick him over in one go. Meanwhile, the leader's right hand started glowing red. Before he releases that power. Crap. This rate. Doesn't look like the bandits will allow us to retreat a single step. Will I be forced to use these swords again? Rune in me. Reveal your power to this world. It's no use. Jewel Snake Sword Grocer. That flame will not be consuming any more fear. Take this. Ah. A dagger would pierce the leader's arm. Ah. However. Rune within me. Reveal your power to this world. Cover him in scorching flames. The leader's hand was wrapped up in dazzling light. I got grosser flutes in my hand, but it's obvious I'm too late to do anything. I'm not going to have time to search this underling's talisman in time. Damn it, to die in a place like this. What is this? My, my magic? It works really well, doesn't it? Take a close look at a room in bed in that dagger. What? Ugh! This! A silence room? Now then, with this your magic has been sealed. Your subordinates have been dispatched as well. What will you do, Lord Fire Hero? Damn you! This come to this. Leader on his sword. At the same time, Camus and Mikotov turn their swords to point at him. Your misdeeds will end here. For our knight's pride and the honour of the Alliance army. Accept this punishment for a sin of injuring a lady's leg. Take this! Two start running at the leader. His lunge at Miklatov was parried. As they raised him overhead, the two men's swords seemed to shine. The leader's whole body is wrapped in this cross of light. Ah! That's their nice tack. Is it already over? And here I thought I'd come back and let them see my knife technique. What a shame. I and his group would help the villagers escape, and Jimmy's gang who had taken over a small fry had all come back. Eh, so that's the end of that then. Big says Lowen's injury is shallow too. Does that mean his, court, his case closed? Yay, I'm glad, I'm glad. Bolgan's happy. There aren't many injured villagers either. So I'll be safe for now. I see. That's good. Oh, so this guy was ahead of a bandit gang, huh? Come on, you. Let's see what kind of face he's got. Those quick words, Koyo talk to off a leader's mask. Him? You know him? 
this man. His name is Clance. So instead of a white knight, and Gerudo's right-hand man. Like me, he wielded a fire rune. Holy cow, in that case. I heard rumours that Clant had deserted when the Alliance army assaulted the Knights of Matilda's Domain. But to escape from grasslands and trick people with the Keepers of Flame. Indeed, he'd use the same sword style that Camus and Mikotov use. They should recognise it, especially if he's a former Knight of Matilda. The two of them looked down at Clant with bitter looks on their faces. The Alliance army defeated the Highland Royal Army and brought peace to the land. But on the other side of the story, with the defeat of the Knights and Remnants of the Alliance Army, started pillaging. Well, that's war for you. Whatever reason it is, where warrior occurs, there are people who will die. And people who will cry for it. The grass on the sky was clear blue. Under that blue sky, we were getting ready to go our separate ways. Although we defended them from a bandit's raid, the villagers' feelings don't seem to have changed much. In the end, I guess I just saw this dispute between bandits. Kawas and Kijimu and Lowen were completely healed thanks to medicine offered by the villagers. Hey Nash, if you ever get a break, come on and stop by Tinto. Sure, but you're leaving already? I've got to go tell that bastard Gustav all about our heroic deeds this time around. Besides, looks like we're dried up our welcome rose village, guys. Well, not like I've been trying to change this mountain bandit look. Well, you got a point there. Hey, you. You're not supposed to agree so readily. You can't help it if it's true. So taking care of our business, so now we're hurrying home. Now, if you come to two rivers, we should stop by my shop. I'll treat you so much booze you'll practically drown in it. How? Oh, drop by. I'm not gonna. I'll try not to drown though. Safe travels then, Nashbo! Yeah, see ya. The three of them went off to the opposite direction from me. These guys, unconcerned with any reports, still give me a feeling they're reliable. Nash, we'll be going soon too. It looks like your feasts have been postponed. On top of that, it's also been leaked at the Reliance Army, so we're not gathering any customers. I see. That's pretty bad. You two? How are we used to this sort of thing? That's right! Whatever happens, Bolgan is happy. <laughs> Nash, are you going back to Harmonia, right? That's too bad. We're going somewhere else. Yeah, wait. How'd you know that? How indeed. Oh, it's because we talked to Miss Sierra. She said she hired someone to carry her luggage before, but since he hasn't had any help with it lately. Her shoulders are getting stiff. She said it was a blonde skirt chaser named Nash from Harmonia. A blonde skirt chaser? I knew it. It was you. When I heard your name was Nash, I was like, a light came off in my head. So this is the guy I fought. Hey. Now then, please excuse us. Let's meet again sometime. See you later, Nash. With smiles on her face as they left as well. That's a place to go back to, they're kind of like me. No, for me it's... And then, I began to follow the road north. I heard voices of Mackie and two knights. Mr Nash. So you're leaving already as well? Yeah, that's right. Originally I only stopped here for some shopping. It was just for a little while, but it turned out a really serious situation. Either way, it's nice of you to come and see me off, Miss Mackey. Sir Nash, why? Mackey, would it be better for you to return to the village? If you are seen here reverse, it will be difficult for you to stay here. Isn't that right, Lord Nash? True enough. It's pretty disappointing to have, a, have to turn down a beautiful lady's farewell, though. Let's... Make it tough. We should get going as well. Right, but your wounds... What, it's just a few scrapes. Mr Nash, I'll be seeing you off anyway, if you don't mind. 
Moreover, Camus, please stay at my house until your wounds are healed. But Mackie, in this situation... No. Everyone, our village. Even though there is no reason for you to come back, even though you saved me, I don't do anything. Besides, the Alliance Army did more than just pillage this village. I think they'll understand that someday. So I was thinking that this sort of fight is just one that's worth fighting, isn't it? In that case, I'll gratefully accept your send-off. Usually I'm either running away or being chased, so I'm used to having to sneak out of the places. It's been a while since I had something like this. Huh? See you later, Camus. I'm guessing what Mackie said isn't your sole reason for fighting. Ah, that's... Bye then. Camus, and I, Camus gave a small, my smile. Mackie always had a small smile. Waving at three of them, left the village of a minute behind. Of course, we get the saving point. I think that's chapter over. Chapter one done. And next episode, we'll start with chapter two, which will be... Calaria. This is an interesting one, because this is the first location not from Suicoden 2, but from Suicoden 3. Well, join me then. Until then, thanks guys for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.